We're going to talk about finding balance and margin in stormy seas. And I'm an integrationist, in other words, I'm a big picture person, so I like 30 hours, not just 30 minutes. I have longer than 30 minutes, but I've written literally 600 prescriptions on how to get margin and balance in your life. And we'll go over um, probably 20 or 25 of them today, but um, buckle your seatbelts. We live in a special moment in history, uh, and I don't say that lightly. It's not very often that a special moment in history uh, comes along. This is a rancher, and he's looking at the tornado or the rainbow. Which is it going to be? If this is in uh, if this is in Kansas, then that would be it'd be the uh, tornado, not because of Oz, but because of what happened this last summer. Horrible drought there. This is what Norwegians do for fun. When I say we live in a special moment in history, kind of in some ways that cliff reminds me, and not just the fiscal cliff, but uh, and this is not Photoshop. These are Norwegians, actual real Norwegians. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a Swede, so I can give as much trouble as it. <laughs> and I have no idea how they got there or what they're going to do about it. But uh, some of you would actually sign up for that. I can't even look at the picture. A special moment in history. What do I mean by that? When Gutenberg came around about 1450, he invented movable type, and so he started mass producing books. Um, when he started doing that, it changed history. It changed everything. Uh, and now there are tens of billions of books every year that are bought and sold in America because of this guy. Fifty years later, Columbus set sail, and he discovered half of the world that had been missing up until that point. Not that the people lived here, but think about how that changed everything. Uh, the Wright brothers in 1903, when they took off. I have a physics degree, and if they consulted me, I'd say, save your money. It's not going to happen. Can you imagine these jumbo jets with all these people in that baggage and all that gas flying 600 miles per hour and five miles up? It just, it's almost incomprehensible. We have about 10 or 11 million flights every year by U.S. carriers. They, they fly somewhere between 700 and 800 million passengers. On most years, there's not a single fatality. It's just impossible. So the Wright brothers changed history. And now you can see they're coming more frequently. Radio. Uh, imagine the days before radio and how that changed. Television, computer, the internet, and the cell phone. Cell phone has done something that no piece of technology has ever done. It has penetrated more than half of the world's population in 20 years. And so that was the first 20 years. Now there are six. there are 6 billion people out of 7 billion people that have some kind of cell phone plan. This has never, ever happened, not even close to that. Well, what is our claim to fame, our special moment in history? It has to do with mathematics. The math has chosen our generational shift just to explode. And it's crazy out there. If you're a person that likes math or is even interested, um, the math is just a strange, uh, behaving very strangely right now. I'm going to give you, in about um, two minutes, a very quick lesson of progress, 1.0, 1 2.0, 3.0. .0. The first 5,000 years of recorded history from about 3100 BC, way over here, to about 1750, there was no progress. Progress is the notion that life automatically improves. Well, in those 5,000 years, the, the world you died out of was the same as the world you were born into. And people didn't have any expectation that life would measurably improve automatically. Progress 2.0, all of a sudden we hit here, 1750, and that's about the time of the Industrial Revolution. And boy, did things take off. It was really interesting. And we started using power, we started using gas and oil, and we had steamships and locomotives, and we had factories with you know movable conveyor belts and mass producing things. And, and because of Gutenberg, we had uh, we had books now, and we got eyeglasses, and and because healthcare was starting to come into its own a little bit, then kids weren't dying of epidemics that didn't happen. So you would build out another part of the house, and and uh, Adam Smith came in economics. You know the the wealth of nations, and also the economics was not just voodoo or astrology. I mean, it was a science, and and uh, things really got got humming and really uh, took off, and we developed this notion that progress is always going to be around and that life was going to reliably get better. I'm not saying that it isn't here today, but I'm saying there's a big question mark about that. And this is where we live. Just in the last 25 or 30 years, and this third era of progress, it's explosive. It's very volatile. It's uncontrollable. There's nobody in charge of this. This is in charge of us because it, it runs our economies. All the economies of the West, increasingly all the economies of the world. So this is where we live. And 
This tends to take away our balance and our margin. I mean, right there, because we live in that particular time. 